Um, you are a staunch supporter of Scottish independence. I believe that will, the record will show that to be true, yes. yes. It runs through you to your very core, does it not? It does. Is it possible, do you think, for you to take decisions on any matter without seeing them through the prism of Scottish independence and your burning desire to achieve it? Uh, yes, I, I know for a fact it is, and if I ever doubted that before uh, COVID, although I had other examples of, of doing that in the job of being First Minister and Health Secretary before that, I, I have been in politics for 30 years. I've been a lifelong campaigner for independence. I don't think in my entire life uh, have I ever thought less about politics generally and independence in particular than I did during the course of the pandemic and particularly in those early stages of the pandemic. People will judge, you know, for better or worse, the decisions my government took. I want to say to people uh, and give this inquiry an assurance that none of those decisions were influenced in any way by political considerations or by trying to gain an advantage uh, for the cause of independence. I was motivated solely by trying to do the best we could to keep people as safe as possible. And we did that to some extent, but not to, and perhaps we never could have done it to the extent I would have wished we could have done. And um, I carry the, the regret for the loss of life, the loss of opportunity, you know, the, the loss of education of our young people. I carry the get of that with me every single day. Um, but in all of the mistakes I made, um, that I will concede some, I may argue weren't mistakes, I will absolutely assert very strongly that I did not take decisions for political reasons and I certainly did not take decisions influenced in some way uh, by considerations around the constitutional argument. I, uh, on the 18th of March 2020, uh, my constitution secretary, Mike Russell at the time, wrote to Michael Gove saying that we were suspending all work on an independence referendum. That didn't recommence apart from uh, reactive work and a particular very focused thing in before the Scottish election in 2021. That didn't recommence until uh, much later in 2021. The government I led focused entirely on trying to do the best we could through COVID. It's a matter of instinct for you, isn't it, to seek to promote the cause of Scottish independence? Uh, yes, it is, but perhaps when you suddenly find yourself in a position of being the leader of a government in the face of a global pandemic, you suddenly find that the instincts you thought you had are not the instincts that come to the fore. My only instinct in uh, the early part of 2020, and this remained the case, was to try to take the best decisions I could and for my government to take the best decisions we could to steer the country through COVID. Um, and I, I hope that people observing the Scottish Government, observing how I went about things during that period, whatever they think about me, my politics, my government, I, I hope that any reasonable person will, will have seen that. It's a matter of instinct to seek division between the Scottish Government and the UK Government to achieve no, and promote the cause of Scottish independence, isn't it? No, it's not. As you said, the position, uh, as at the beginning of the pandemic, I think you said the 18th of March, was that Mr Russell had written, in fact, to Mr Gove to indicate that uh, campaigning for a second independence referendum would be suspended. Is yes, I, th I think we also requested at that time that the UK Government did likewise oh. around the constitutional project of, of Brexit, and that was declined. The, the UK government never suspended any of its work on Brexit. One of the reactive things that the Scottish government officials had to do during COVID was respond to consultation on the Internal Market Act, for example. Mm. It was the transition period for Brexit, wasn't it, in 2020? There were... So, so work was required on that? Well, I, I think that is perhaps a, a matter of opinion uh, rather than fact. Um, could we look, please, at INQ 0002144088, page 13, paragraph 56E. This is um, the 30th of June, Cabinet Minutes. Um, 
an agreement is reached at the end of this uh, Cabinet meeting uh, that it was agreed that consideration should be given to restarting work on independence and a referendum with the arguments reflecting the experience of the coronavirus crisis and developments on EU exit. The Cabinet agreed on that date, did they not, to seek to promote the cause of Scottish independence by politicising the pandemic? Uh, no, I, I, I respectfully don't think that is a, a fair or accurate reading of, of that part. I remember the, the meeting. Um, there was no uh, particular discussion. This was a Brexit paper. Again, you know, we were having to consider issues around uh, Brexit. We had no choice in that matter. This was a, a Brexit paper. Um, I don't there was no particular discussion around that uh, recommendation, uh, as far as I recall. We agreed that consideration should be given to restarting work. In matter of fact, work did not restart. It was not consideration that led to that happening. Um, and that is, that is the fact of the matter. We agreed to consider something. I certainly I'm not aware of being part of any real consideration because in my mind there was no prospect of starting work on independence at that time. But in any event, it didn't happen. Why would there have been any mention of this at all given Mr Russell's announcement? Um, I think it's very... It would have been very difficult in the context of a debate or a paper on Brexit, uh, perhaps for that not to have... So that would have arisen in the context... This was not a COVID paper... Uh, that this conclusion uh, was attached to. This was a paper on EU exit. It was a paper on Brexit. The words say what they say, Ms Sturgeon. Consideration should be given to restarting work on independence and a referendum with the arguments reflecting the experience of the coronavirus crisis. I appreciate the words say what they say. I'm, I'm not arguing with that. But the facts also say what they say, which was that whatever consideration... Uh, may or may not have been given. I, I certainly wasn't uh, part of it at, at that point. And it, if somebody you know, had come to me after that and said, right, OK, should we consider this and restart work? I'd have said, absolutely not. The facts are that no work did restart on independence at that point. You've told me earlier in other contexts that Cabinet minutes are really the highest source of authority as to what was actually happening. Not in this case, apparently. Well, well I'm not saying they don't reflect a, an outcome of Cabinet. I'm, I'm saying that that didn't happen. So <clears throat> we didn't restart work. Whether or not Cabinet had... You know, somebody in the course of a Cabinet meeting had said we should agree consideration of this. The fact is it didn't happen. A few hours after this meeting, on the same date as these Cabinet minutes, you appeared on your regular coronavirus briefing and said, frankly, anybody who is trotting out political or constitutional arguments is in the wrong place completely and has found themselves completely lost. Is there not a hypocrisy between saying publicly that any, anyone who is making constitutional arguments during the pandemic is in the wrong place uh, and uh, completely lost and having, there having been a decision in Cabinet hours before uh, that uh, there should be consideration of restarting work on the campaign for independence uh, reflecting the experience of the coronavirus crisis? That had not been a, a significant part of the discussion. It was clearly a comment that was made. Otherwise, it wouldn't appear in the, uh, the conclusions like that. But I did not leave that cabinet thinking we were about to restart uh, work on independence. And uh, I would have made my views clear that that was not going to happen uh, if that had been the case. We didn't restart work on independence. Uh, we didn't, um, you know, we had to... Over the course of the pandemic, we had to respond to a court case that had been taken about a judicial review that had been taken. You know, governments have to answer PQs or FOIs. Um, we had to respond to some Brexit, uh, but we didn't. Uh, re all of the, uh, the the team that had been working pre-COVID on independence and an independence referendum had, at the start of COVID, been redeployed into COVID work. Sturgeon, oh. <clears throat> that's not a comment. They they. Minutes read, agreed. That means Cabinet agreed, doesn't it? Well, so are you saying you would have overruled Cabinet? If after that... So let me be clear what I mean. There was clearly some uh, comment made in that Cabinet meeting that said, oh, maybe we should think about restarting work in independence. Remember, this was at a point where uh, we had... Uh, we were in, uh, going into the summer 2020 where cases were falling and... Uh, no, no, just please focus on the point. It's agreed. It's not a comment. It's, it's an agreement by Cabinet. But 
agreed that consideration should be given. What yes. I meant is if somebody had come to me afterwards and said, we've done this process of consideration and we now think we should restart work in independence, I would have said, I don't want to do that. And I would have said to Cabinet, let's not do that because it's not the right time to do that. But I think more materially, that didn't happen. Nobody came to me and said, you know, if, if that said, agreed to restart work on independence, that would mean something much more than that does. There was not a process of consideration that then saw somebody come to me with a proposal to restart work on independence. And I'm sorry, uh, Milady, I'm genuinely sorry if it sounds as if I'm dancing on the head of a pin here. I don't mean to. But the key point here is that we did not restart work on independence at that point or anywhere near that point. If it were to be decided on the basis of the evidence before this inquiry that, that, that there was a politicisation of the pandemic and that you had used the pandemic as a, as a means of uh, pursuing uh, your goal of Scottish independence, that would be a considerable betrayal of the Scottish people, would it not? Um, with respect, I, I don't believe that conclusion uh, would fairly be reached because it's not what I did and I don't believe there is evidence uh, to but suggest... But you, you've given your position, Ms Sturgeon, as to whether you did it or not. My question um, was, if it were to be decided that that's not right, if, if I that would be a considerable betrayal of the Scottish people, would it not? If I had at any point decided to politicise a, a global pandemic that was robbing people of their lives and livelihoods and educational opportunities and had decided in the face of that to prioritise campaigning for independence, then yes, it absolutely would have been as you described, which is precisely why I didn't do it and wouldn't have done it. 